Hi again, this is Supernova. This time I'm going to prove that 0.9 repeating doesn't equal 1. I know this is going to totally blow your mind and you'll probably disagree with me, but the math works out. Uh, there are many proofs for 0.9 repeating equals 1. I'm going to take on the toughest one and if you want to challenge me on the others, maybe I'll make another video about it. Maybe I'll just answer you by, by personal email. but. Let's take out the strongest one. You've probably seen this one if you've been convinced by the argument. 0.9 repeating equals x. Uh, you multiply both sides of the equation by 9 and you get 9.9 .9 repeating equals 10x. Subtract x, uh, which of course gives you 9x here and over here. If you remember, 0.9 repeating is x, so you just take away a 0.9 repeating. You have 9 equals 9x. Divide both sides by 9 and you have 1 is equal to x. And if uh, x is also equal to 0.9 repeating, then 1 equals 0.9 repeating. Now this appears sound. I mean, you can you can do the uh, math here. It's just so long as you're doing the same thing to both sides, you you have proper algebra. But you're not doing the same thing to both sides. And I'll, I'll demonstrate with a different example. Uh, 0.4 repeating, because I like the math. I think it looks nice. Uh, let's see what happens when we do this with 0.4 repeating. Uh, it equals x, you multiply both sides by 10, you subtract the x, uh, you have 4 divided by 9, and that gives you 0.4 repeating. And if you punch this into a uh, calculator, this is exactly what you'll get. But you don't exactly have 0.4 repeating here. Uh, if you do the check, doing the math backwards, you'll find that 0.4 repeating uh, times 9 does not give you 4. Uh, you have uh, a 6 on the end when 4 times 9 equals 36. You carry the 3 and it gives you 9. So you'll do that all the way to the end to where you have 39 and you point it, put in the decimal point. You have 3.9 repeating 6. Uh, your point infinite zeros for short. Where is that? Uh, well, if you do it on something other than a calculator, you'll find that uh, there's a remainder. Um, 9 goes in 4 zero times, so it's 0 point. You drop down to 0, it goes in 4 times for uh, 36. You end up with 4. Again, it goes in 4 times, and, and you do that infinitely. But you've always got that remainder. And uh, studied mathematicians among you will know that that remainder is actually going to be point zeros four to the end because it's also getting carried along with the decimal point because it's been carried so many times. So your remainder is point infinite zeros four. The math doesn't exactly work out. Well, why not? Didn't we do the same thing to, to both sides here? Um, it, it seems like this all checks out, but it's not because when we think of infinite fours, algebra doesn't see infinity the same way that we do. Consider, we start out with a number that I'm going to call n1, uh, 0.4 repeating, equals x. Nothing wrong with that. When we multiply this by 10, we actually have one less 4. Uh, the decimal point gets moved to the, the, the other side of the 4. We don't add any 4s. Now you say, it's infinity. There's as many 4s as you want. The algebra doesn't see it that way. It says that there's one less 4 here. And we're, we're going to prove that. The, the math works out if you treat it that way. So in these future examples, n1 is x, and n2 is this new number that we made after we multiplied by 10. It's point infinite zeros 4. So if we do the check here, uh, point 4 equals x. Uh, you multiply both sides by 10, and then you subtract x, uh, the n1. And you still get 9x, but over here you see you're uh, subtracting a larger number of fours than there is there. And if you see the math down here, that extra four, uh, that extra space becomes a zero, and it, it works out. Uh, you'll get a number that's actually divisible by nine to give you 0.4 repeating. Um, it, the math works out perfectly. There's no remainder. It, it works out exactly like you would expect that it should. Um, there's more than one way to do this though, of course. You could 
subtract that smaller number, n2. 0.4 repeating equals x times 10 by both sides. Of course, when you subtract the smaller number, you get an even 4 over here, but you don't have the same thing over here. You have 10x minus 0.4 repeating with that little space at the end. It's short of 4. Um, you could divide both sides by 10, and you have 0.4 equals x minus 0 0.0444, and since you've shifted the decimal over, you don't actually have that extra space anymore. And then when you add that decimal to both sides, your 0.4 plus the 0 0.0, uh, 0.04's infinite gives you the uh, 0.4 infinite equals x. The, the math works out perfectly. Um, there's another way to do this. That way it doesn't feel like it's in the spirit of the uh, actual proof. We want to be dividing by 9. So here we have uh, 0.4 repeating equals x. Multiply both sides by 10. Uh, this time 4 equals 9x plus x, the actual x, 0.4 repeating, minus 0.4 repeating with the extra space missing. And then if we uh, add these real numbers here, we have 0.9x plus point infinite zeros four. Um, I, I already showed you the subtraction. Um, and if you subtract that, that point zero infinite four from both sides, again, you get 3.9 repeating nine six equals nine x. And we know from the, the multiplication that we did that that does exactly uh, make x equal point four repeating. Um, now you may be wondering, well, wait a moment, when we do that, uh, that original math backwards, 1 times 9 equals 9x. Uh, you can do the math backwards and it works out. Well, yeah, you can because you didn't subtract the same number up here from both sides. This side you're actually subtracting x, and this side you're subtracting x without that extra 9 on the end. And the reason that this actually turns out funky is because uh, the the point zeros repeating nine is actually divisible by nine, and kind of unseen behind the the works. When it's divided by nine, you get point zeros repeating one, and it just kind of adds that on to the point nine repeating that you would get at the end. And instead, you get one. Um, I, I don't have time here because of the YouTube time limit to show you. But if you do the math yourself and actually subtract n1 or n2 from both sides, you'll find that this actually gives you a number at the end that you can multiply by 9 and then add on the remainder and you'll have uh, the actual number. Or it will, it will actually give you uh, x equals 0.9 repeating at the end. Um, just like it should. Um, now, of course, there are other proofs, uh, like Vihart's video that I've linked to below says uh, every real number has another real number in between it and the next number, and she says because there's nothing between 0.9 repeating and 1 that they must be the same number. Well, by your logic, 0.9 repeating 8 is equal, to same, is equal to 0.9 repeating because there's no increment between them except point infinite zeros 1. Just because they're real close doesn't mean they're the real number. The same number, and of course, if you don't uh, believe that you can have a number that just uh, turns into a, a different number on the end, like point repeating 9, 8, um, I, I've given you an example of how you come up with that mathematically. It, it's possible. Um, by using that system, you could increment any real number to come up with it being equal to another real number. So uh, that one falls too. And there there are others and they're all equally fallacious, but I, I hope that I've at least put some doubt in your mind and you'll you'll question it a bit in the future.